So I would just know like, oh, this person, like when I'm around them, I could be like perfectly happy. And then all of a sudden I'm depressed or like sad or angry or whatever. And, um, and I'm like, this doesn't feel like me. And I was like, okay, now leave me alone. And there you go. You got me around. Experience the colors and then go. I talk with my hands a lot. I'll try to not do that. Well, <laughs> me too. Me too. And she's like, well, would you, would you like to give a talk? And my first thought was, oh my God, I'm going to have to learn PowerPoint. And <laughs> <laughs>Guys, I'm super excited to have Leanne Vinay join us today for the Ripple Effect podcast. This woman is incredible. She's an artist. She's an engineer. She's an inventor. She created a device called the Red Juvenator Biophotonic Light Therapy. Can't wait to dive into this. I know her to be committed to helping people take back control and biohack their health. And uh, to say that this woman is a buzzsaw of entrepreneurial spirit would be an understatement and then some. So I can't wait for you guys to meet her. So let's dive right in. Leanne, welcome to the Ripple Effect Podcast. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Steve. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here and chat with you. Uh, I am. I am super excited for this interview. I got to tell you, um, you probably remember when we first connected, um, you came to an eight minute ripple. And since that time, you have always stood out to me as somebody that is, you just have an amazing spirit. But the thing I really was impressed with the night that I met you was just your enthusiasm and your energy and this incredible smile that invited everybody in. So I wanted to start there to tell you how much that um, first interaction meant to me and the fact that we stayed connected via social all this time um, really does mean the world to me. So I'm so grateful you're here today. Oh, well, thank you. I, I still remember that encounter. It was so long ago. I can't even remember. God. Yeah. I want to say it was like 2015, 2016. Yeah. Like back, way back when. Yeah. It was Maybe even I think, earlier. I think it was earlier than that. Yeah. But anyway, it was a long time ago. I think long I was still ago. an artist back then. Wasn't yeah. I? That you were. Yeah. In fact, yeah. that was the thing that I think that um, when you came to the After Ripple, you and I started talking and, it, you know, and it's kind of a perfect, you know, sort of approach to kick this thing off, right? Because when we first started talking, you made a comment about um, color and energy and the enthusiasm that you had towards helping people understand how important it was to embrace that, how that brings in creativity, how it, uh, you know, unblocks the... Uh, you know, the challenges that we often have from a mental and physical perspective. And of course, obviously that's informed the work that you're doing now. And I, I will get into that, but could you just give my audience just a little sense of kind of what inspired you? I mean, I almost always like to start with an origin story, but be, I feel like from a origin perspective, that's kind of where our relationship started. So I want to, I want to dive in there. Well, I've always been interested in alternative healing. First of all, I I came out of the womb with a massive distrust for big pharma. I just came from a pill popping family and everybody was popping pills all the time in my family. And I'm from Canada and you could get codeine over the counter. So when my mother would even try to give me things like, you know, children's aspirin, I'd be like, no, yeah. I'm not taking that. My body will fix itself. So um, that's a constant. That's been a constant throughout my life. I have had a voracious appetite for learning and anytime I would learn something new, I would always want to teach people um, and share that information. And as a child, that just seemed normal to me. I only found out, you know, later in childhood and when friends would point it out to me that they loved the fact that I was so curious and would always ask a lot of questions. I would always ask tons of questions and I would never just take anything at face value. And um, I was, I remember that conversation because I was very surprised. I thought it was not everybody like that. I'm like, I'm like, it was normal for me. So yeah. that's, that's another constant. My interest specifically in the energetic aspects of color started when I was living in California. I was working as an engineer. I used to design submarines for Lockheed. This has nothing to do with designing submarines for Lockheed. I just happened to be taking um, an evening course that was being taught it like through this adult 
extension thing or whatever. It was so bizarre and random. Well, nothing's random, but how I came across it. But it was all about basically using untapped aspects of the brain. So a lot of parapsychology and things like that. But one of the exercises that we did, the teachers put up all of these colored um, construction paper all around the room on the walls. And they just said, go stand in front of each one of those colors and see how you feel and see what comes up, if anything, and then jot it down. So that was really the first time I noticed, you know, like in a really strong response to individual colors. And that was kind of the beginning of a lot of exploration for me. Um, I ended up moving to Italy for seven years back then, shortly after I left engineering, moved to Italy, um, studied all kinds of alternative healing modalities, a lot of them having to do with color and the color, how color influences the different, you know, chakras in our bodies. And then when I got into Eastern medicine, I'm also an Eastern medicine physician, um, the five elements aspect of how colors um, influence and directly correlate with and um, influence different energy systems within our body, which are all interconnected, but how, so anyway, it's a big, it's a big topic. So, um, yeah, that's, I do, I do, I, not to interrupt you, but I don't remember specifically how you were talking about how you were fascinated with how I had come up with my logo colors. And then oh, you, yeah, and yeah, you and I were talking about it cause it was such a, you would come to the ripple and I remember you coming up to me in the after ripple. We were at this little, you know, nondescript bar right down the street from where we had it. Right. And uh, you were you were like, I've never been to an event where questions were the predominant thing. So I knew, you know, when you say you were always asking questions, it, I could tell uh -huh. it resonated with you. Right. But then as you and I were chatting and you asked about the color spectrum, you're like this blue. I completely see it. But it, um, I remember you framing it in a way like this is kind of like your alter ego color. But you have mm -hmm. a much stronger dominant color that you were seeing in me. And it turned out, um, uh, you know, you were like, what is that color? What do you think it is? And I said red. And you were like, yeah. that's exactly it. Because at the end of the day, red's my favorite color. And we got into this great conversation about it. Yeah. And I just remember the distinction. And then you, you shared a little bit about what you were doing. But at that time, like you said, full-time artist, you were kind of focused on how you could take the visual medium and move it in a way that could actually help uh, you know, people really open up their space and just, you know, be a part of that. So when you talk about the, the session that you went to or the, you know, the um, continuing education class, standing next to each color and seeing what that brings up to you is really fascinating to me. Because I, yeah. I felt like you were, you were totally getting that, you know, when we first met. Yes. And that, that was decades before me ever becoming an artist. So, yeah. um, it's kind of funny how these things, you know, we, we, we learn things, we assimilate, we absorb, and then, well, or at least I do, I take in data from, you know, thousands of directions. And I'm, I got my microcomputer in here is like constantly going beep, 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 making connections and connecting the dots between different things. And uh, yeah, so that's, um, that's basically how I ended up connecting the dots between all these disparate fields of study that nobody had ever even thought to cross connect before and validating the science of light therapy for the masses in the medical community, um, bringing in hard science, hard research, but connecting it with, you know, the biophotonics research that's been going on, plant growing, um, um, the electromagnetic spectrum, physics, how sunlight, you know, has all of these color frequencies within it, then evolution and all of that. And then back then, you know, when people didn't know anything about blue light and the fact that these LED screens emit high percentages of blue light and how it can throw off your circadian rhythm, all of that was brand new information when I was teaching about it, like nobody knew. And then it just started getting picked up by bloggers and then influencers and spreading. But I was doing a lot of interviews back then as well, um, magazine interviews and t uh, television and international and nationally syndicated radio. and. Uh, so just kind of spreading the information that way organically, I wasn't ever going out and promoting any of this. It was like people were finding me and, and it was just like this onslaught of, you know, people wanting to know more and more. And that was where I ended up leaving the professional art world because it's like, I didn't have time to do all the speaking and the teaching 
and do the art. But the art was the catalyst. Yeah. Um, and the paintings were the catalyst for having these conversations in the first place, place and bringing them out into the world where people would see my paintings. They'd have these very strong responses to the color, the color energies in the paintings. And they'd be like, oh, my God, I can't stop staring at your red paintings or your blue paintings yeah. or your yeah. whatever color it was. And then I would tell them, if you're really strongly drawn to that color, it might mean you've got this going on in your body and this going on in your life, kind of much yeah. like, wow, yep. we had that conversation. And what colors are you really drawn to normally? And what colors are you drawn to right now? Because we have our main constitutional colors that are kind of like our battery recharge colors, like red is for me and for you. You know, we're high energy people. and it's like it keeps your battery charged up. I thrive being in this high energy state. So, um, and then, you know, like, but sometimes maybe you're overloaded with like too much energy or too, you know, like it's the same thing when you, like if you drink too much coffee and you're caffeine mm -hmm. sensitive, that you did, like you, the last color you're gonna wanna be around is red because it's yep. more stimulating. So you might temp, you might normally love red, but if you're overstimulated, you might be like, no, I need some blue or some teal or some indigo right now or some, violet or any of those calm, more calming sedating colors. So is that what you, what you reference as the energy body, really understanding what resonates with each individual and helping um, gain a better well, understanding yeah. of that? The, the energy body, the energy body is basically, I mean, we're much more than this physical body. Most people have been conditioned to think we're a physical body and we deal with chemistry in the physical body. I mean, Western medicine and most, most alternative forms of medicine focus on chemistry, whether it's, you know, trying to manipulate chemistry through pharmaceuticals or trying to manipulate chemistry through supplementation. Um, that's, that's downstream from what's happening in the quantum physics aspects of the energy body. So my physical body is here, you know, theoretically, you know, you, you think you're a solid object, but really, I mean, there's no such thing as solid when we're talking in terms of physics, but so the, our energy body actually radiates, you know, several feet out around us, okay. the, you know, the, some people call it the aura. Um, but the way that people experience their own, you know, feeling their own energy body, if you're ever, you know, talking to somebody, you're in a conversation, somebody's standing close to you and you don't like something about them. There's just kind of like, you know, like there's something icky about this person and you want to move away. They're not physically touching you, but you can still feel their energy, even if they're not looking at you. It's like, it's the same thing. Like, you know, if you, you walk into a room and you're like, Oh, I feel like so-and-so is here and you might and look around and then you see, Oh, there they are yep, they're yep. across the other side of the room. You know, you pick up, there's so many ways that we are in tune with our energy body and other people's energy bodies, but it's, it's at a often subconscious level because people haven't been really conditioned to think in those terms in modern society. Yeah. Um, how, how was it that you actually found your way to really exploring this? Was it because you're a constant seeker of, you know, information and we're doing the research that you sort of figured out this? Because I, I got to think a lot of this has informed your work with the device that you've invented. And so I, I want to get into that in a second. But, I, you know, I'm really curious about, you know, what that stimulus was for you to really, you know, dive in with both feet. Um, well, that, that's another lifelong constant because I'm what's known as a kinesthetic em empath. I feel what other people feel and I feel it inside my body. Like I could, it was very handy to have that, that skill as it, when I was working in the healing arts. So I could tune in with my patients and just kind of like open the portal and feel like what was out of balance in their physical body and energy body, whether it was emotional or physical, like, you know, I just tuned in and I, my pain, my knee would start hurting, for example. And then I'd know that they, had, they were having knee pain or that they were grieving. I could feel the pain that they were experiencing from a, you know, grieving standpoint, whatever, whatever it happened to be. Um, so it was actually very problematic as a child to have that ability I because imagine. I was like this little energy sponge and it, I, I became very introverted because of it, because anytime I'd be around people, I didn't know how to shut the portal. You know, like I would just be constantly picking up other people's feelings and emotions and things like that. And it was very um, discombobulating 
to say the least, <laughs> and not knowing what, what it was. I would just know like, oh, this person, like when I'm around them, I could be like perfectly happy. And then all of a sudden I'm depressed or like sad or angry or whatever. And, um, and I'm like, this doesn't feel like me. So I just learned to isolate myself, spend huge amounts of time in nature and um, kind of then started naturally enhancing those abilities instead of like what happens with a lot of children that have natural abilities in the energy realm, it kind of gets conditioned or taught out of you when you talk about it. I just learned to, after a few trials, to not talk about it anymore. And uh, so like, it's like, okay, this is not a good topic because people don't believe it, first of all. And then they try to tell you that's you're wrong. So I just, I learned at an early age to not talk about stuff like that. Well, and it sounds like maybe with your upbringing too, you know, you know, with people that were around you that were accustomed to, you know, treating themselves with um, pharmaceuticals, right? You know, that, that yes. probably, you know, probably weren't too open to that, uh, you know, the, you know, well, yeah, I mean, pharmaceuticals right? are all about blocking everything. Yeah, yeah. They, they suppress it. and they block and they, they literally disconnect you from your core self. Yeah. So yeah, anybody that is reliant on pharmaceuticals, you're actually making yourself worse in, in many, many ways. Um, you'll never heal that way for one thing. And it actually puts a lot of toxic overload in your physical body and the energy body. And then it disconnects you even more from your core self. So you keep getting more and more removed from your ability to heal. And of course that's all by design. So <laughs> yeah, of course. yeah, I mean, it's money, yeah. right? You know, you keep, keep needing the medicine. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a, you know, trillion dollar business, right? So of course they want to yeah. keep you on it. Yeah. And one, one, drug then causes 10 new problems and then you need yeah. 10 more drugs and then it's like a dog chasing its tail just oh, around yeah. circles and circles and yeah so i work with a lot of people i have a community a big global community of all my customers that everybody gets to join for free where i give them all this guidance and teach them a whole new paradigm of how to heal permanently by focusing on the energy body system which governs the physical body so instead of trying to medicate and treat the physical body with chemistry, you, foc you focus on healing the energy body system and then everything in the the physical body, which is downstream from there, resolves as well. So, so let's talk about that work a little bit because I have to think it has informed this. I mean, you're the inventor of this device called the Rejuvenator, right? Rejuvenator. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that. What is biophotonic light therapy? How does that apply to the work that you're doing? I mean, what I find fascinating after, you know, you and I reconnected and, and I've just kind of um, followed with great interest for a while is how you took your engineering experience and your, you know, that background and that research and that inquisitive mind and you just parlayed this into developing something that was so needed. So I, I, I'm, I'm fascinated. I want to know the story. Yeah. And it was very reluctantly. I refused to do that for 10 years. So like, <laughs> I was thinking about all this stuff, validating the science of light therapy, because knowing coming from an engineering background, I knew having been in that world and working with a lot of engineers, you know, a lot of engineers go off and do entrepreneurial things that are like me, not cut out for working in corporate America or working for some big government contracting firm yeah. where you're like, you're color within the lines and don't even think about straying outside the lines, yeah. God forbid, you know, like, you no, know, don't have an original thought. We don't like those. Don't <laughs> think for yourself, just follow the rules and do everything you're told to totally. do and just yep. do it really well. Um, so, um, where was I going with that? <laughs> like, well, 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 how that, how you sort of deviated and, and you know, we're able to turn oh, this into this. Venture. Yeah. So, well, it, so it goes back to validating the science of light therapy for the masses and medical community. And I didn't, I, I never planned to do that. I was a full-time artist. Like I said, I started having these conversations one-on-one -on -one with people about the healing effects of color, why we're strongly drawn to certain colors over others at different times in our lives and how they correspond to the energy system, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, people kept, you know, like, I want to know more. Where's the book? You know, I want to buy this book. And I'm like, well, the book's in my head. This is like hundreds <laughs> of the dots. And it's like, I, there, I no. can you write a book? It's like, oh, do you know how much work that would be? So the pestering for three years where it's like, oh, can you put some of this on your website at least? I'm like, oh my God. So finally I put some information on my website, very pared down, but it's like, okay, so this is general 
information that will apply to, you know, these colors and everybody can use this information. And I was like, okay, now leave me alone. And there you go. You got me around. So that was then now it's on the internet. And then I started getting bombarded with invitations to speak. And the first, the first speaking engagement was at a major medical university at UT Health Sciences Center in San Antonio, where they wanted me to come and exhibit my paintings and then teach about the science of the healing colors, the, the science behind the healing aspects of color and light. And it was just going to be a stationary exhibition where it's like, okay, we're going to have the paintings and then I'll have all this information on panels and we'll, you can experience the colors and then go, I talk with my hands a lot. I'll try to not do that. Well, <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> and then go read the information. So do the right brain experiential part where you have the experience with the colors and then go learn what it means. That was where it was, what it was supposed to be. When the, the curator for this um, exhibition came to my gallery in Austin, when I was living in Austin at the time, and uh, she came with her, her husband and they're leaving. And he's like, you know, she needs to give a talk. And, and the woman is like, well, we don't do talks with these. We, there's just like an exhibition. And he's like, no, she has to give a talk. You can't just like go and read this stuff. She has to give a talk. And, and she, and she's like, well, would you, would you like to give a talk? And my first thought was, oh my God, I'm going to have to learn PowerPoint. And <laughs> <laughs> so I, but I, but my intuition said, yes, you have to give a talk. So, so much of the stuff that I've done, I do it. I don't do it because I choose to do it. It's because my intuition or my guides or whatever you want it, what it you know, my downloads, I call them. Um, I get informed that way. And it's like, you have to do this. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. It's like, it's that crazy. in your fan base, they demand it. Yeah. <laughs> so it is, it literally is enough people pestering me to do things. So, so I give that first talk with the exhibition, then that gets, you know, word spreads about that. There are TV interviews that are newspaper interviews and all kinds of stuff. Then UT Health Sciences Center in Dallas, which has like 10,000 people, if not more, they invite me to bring the exhibition, give a lecture up there. And, uh, and then it just kind of snowballed South by Southwest Interactive. I spoke there and Mensa, the Mensa conference, and um, it just kind of grew from there. And then I started getting into, invited to speak at major medical um, conferences, international conferences and stuff like that. But um, what was the original question? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, do, I mean, utilizing was, your work. Yeah, utilizing your background and your experience as an engineer to actually come up with mm -hmm. this device, right? Because you were using right. your painting and these lectures as an avenue to, you know, to put the concepts out there. But then you, you really parlayed this into an invention. So talk about that. Yes. So, well, for 10 years, 10 years, I taught about all of this stuff and light therapy started becoming a big marketing thing. Like people started hearing about light therapy. Um from my teachings and then people started buying things, you know, industrial plant grow lights on Alibaba and like, Hey, we can make a lot of money because this light therapy trend is a boom. So, you know, like, well, they were buying these industrial plant grow lights on Alibaba and then rebranding them as light therapy devices and selling them for oh. thousands of dollars. And, um, so basically using my teachings to sell, their products, but their products in many cases were actually harming people because they were like, anyway, that's a whole other topic where there are so many like people that know nothing about healing and know nothing about like, I mean, know enough about like therapy to be dangerous where it's like, Hey, you know, like, why don't I create this thing? You know, I'll just go and buy a thing. product or right? a bunch, right? What yeah. they were really good at was marketing and they were, yeah. because they were coming from a marketing background and they were, they'd make these slick websites. And so I was getting approached, this was happening in 2016. I had three companies back to back. I'd already been getting approached by people that were selling devices and wanting me to promote them. And I'm like, Oh, this is like garbage. But anyway, three companies back to back in 2016 that were not only selling, that reached out to me, wanted me to promote their products. And, and all three of them were like, you are actually going to be harming people with these things. So you don't know what, and again, they're driven by money. It's like, they see a growing trend. We can sell a lot of these things and we want you to promote them to your, you know, you're the, you're the pioneer in the science of light therapy. So we want you to endorse our product. Um, and then after trying them and, and, and telling them, it's like, no, you're actually, there are, there are, you're, the benefits of this are going to be nominal and 
you're actually going to be harming a lot of people. And I don't care how much money you want to pay me. I won't tell people to buy your product. I would, I, if I could find something that works, I will tell people about it for free. So that was where then the universe, another term I use, it was like, Leanne, you've got to do this yourself. I've been already getting pestered by so many people <laughs> for years at that point, you know, because people would email me and go, Leanne, I saw your videos and everything, like a light bulb went on. It all makes sense. And then I went on the internet and I tried to find something to buy and I spent $8,000 on this thing and it made me feel worse and it didn't help and I can't return it. I bought $8,000. What do you recommend? And I'm like, I would be more than happy to recommend something if I could find something myself that was really effective and would be beneficial to you. So anyway, that was, that was again, I'm, I didn't want to manufacture anything. I didn't want to sell anything. I just wanted to teach people about, you know, the importance really of getting more sunshine, spending time in nature, which, cause people were so disconnected. And in my own healing practice, I would see people, it's like that were dealing with cancer. It's like, well, how much time do you spend outdoors? Oh, I know. I don't go under the sun ever because it gives you cancer. It's like, well, you, you, you have cancer. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you never spend time in the sun. So anyway, um, and that was part of, you know, a big part of my teachings. So, um, yeah, finally I got funneled in that direction. I had medical doctor friends of mine that were also saying, you've got to make your own light therapy device. So at that point I was like, well, there's no point in making a light therapy device because light therapy alone is not enough to elicit these profound healing benefits. It can help if you do it the right way. It can help with a lot of things, especially superficial things and skin issues and, you know, a number of different things. But, but I wanted to help people like per, with permanent healing and with permanent root level healing, you have to address the imbalances and the, the, the toxicity and the blockages in the energy body system. So that was where I developed the rejuvenator, which is a full quantum healing device. So it heals and treats the energy body. And the way that it does that, it puts energy, life force energy back into the system. It's not just shining light on you. It's actually putting that life force energy into your energy body, opening up blocked energy channels and healing wherever there's physical tissue damage. So torn rotator cuff, torn meniscus, you know, hormone imbalance, um, thyroid dysfunction, uh, brain cancer, brain glioblastoma. I mean, you name it. It's like everything because it's treating and healing at the root, which is in the energy body system, filling up your, I, I use the analogy often of like, if we're a car, our life force energy is what our, our gasoline, we need that life force energy to get through life. The only thing that, that distinguishes you, Steve, talking to me now, sitting there very radiant and, you know, smiling and being alive is that life force energy. Because if you yeah. didn't have that life force energy and you, you would be laying on the floor and I'd be going, Steve, so the life force energy is the distinction between having a living energized body and being a dead hunk of flesh. Western medicine, it analyzes flesh and they take chunks of flesh out of your body to analyze. And you're, it's not any, it's not part of a living system anymore when you're doing that. So um, anyway, the, the rejuvenator treats and heals the energy body system and heals any physical damage that has happened in the physical body at the same time. So I have so many questions, but for the rejuvenator, when you, when you went down the path and said, okay, fine, I have to, I guess I have to do this, right? How difficult was that? Was that, I mean, was that just like, you know, once all the pieces fell into place, it just went? Or was it, you know, can you talk about that journey? Because as entrepreneurs, and, and you have such great entrepreneurial energy, right? You are like a lot of entrepreneurs I know. They're like, nope, 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 don't want to do it. But then, if nobody's going to do it right, I'm going to, I'm going to have to do it. I need to solve this problem. I have to fix this, or I have to get this idea uh, brought out because it will have a larger impact. And, and so I'm so in, enamored with how you've done it and what you've done, but you know, was it once everything fell into place, you went or were, were there a lot of bumps along the way? No, um, kind of none of the above. Um, it was, it, it, the catalyst was those three companies back to back that were reaching out to me and three of them in three different ways were going to be severely harming people. A lot of people that were already sick, especially, yeah. um, 
And then my mama, mama bear part came in. Cause it's like, you, okay, you're, you're using my teachings to actually hurt people. Yeah, um, yeah. so, um, then, then I had already been invited. Um, I don't know if you've heard of bulletproof, bulletproof mm-hmm. coffee. Yeah. Um, that was the thing they're, they're separated from the person who founded the company originally. But, um, um, so I had been invited the previous two years to speak at their big conference that they had out in California once a year. And, um, I couldn't do it because of timing. And that year in January of 2016, they just started planning the conference. They reached out to me. They're like, we're the, you're the first person we talked to. Can you speak at the end of September, beginning of October at the con- bulletproof conference? And I said, okay, yes, I don't have anything scheduled then put it on my calendar and they're like oh and by the way because you're going to be one of the speakers do you want they had like forty five hundred dollar boots they have a big tech hall where people would come in and sell all their you know biohacking stuff and do you want a free booth and i'm like okay well i don't sell anything but i'll take it yeah i'll do something interactive i'll do i don't know an educational thing you know where people can experience color and light you know i'll I'll figure out something but yeah i'll take the booth so um so this is in january of 2016. then you know later that year i start getting contacted by these three companies literally back to back and it was basically again the universe does these things in very mysterious ways where it's like here Leanne, I'm going to like you, I know you don't want to do this thing. I know you don't want to have your own product line and, you know, create something and manufacture it and do all that and sell it and blah, blah, blah. And to this day, I don't sell my product. I have something available for sale, but I never sell it. (laughs) All of my customers sell it for me. So it's always coming through word of mouth. Um, So, um, um, and I don't have an affiliate program. I don't pay them to sell it. They they sell it because they want to friends and family members. But, but anyway, so, so I've got this booth, I've got the speaking engagement and then these three companies back to back where I'm like, hell no, I'm not going to tell people to buy your product because I'm not going to, you know, promote something that's going to be harmful. So, um, anyway, then it was just kind of like, oh my God, you know, like that thing, like, uh, there's like, I keep waiting for somebody else to make something that's going to be helpful and it's just not happening. And I have all the, all the information, the knowledge I'd been already researching, you know, and doing my own research with different frequencies and stuff. So anyway, I was like, oh, what would be involved with doing this? So I started, I started looking, I, I realized as an engineer, um, especially, you know, working in any kind of like engineering, um, practical application, you don't, and this I learned from when I was working at Lockheed, I would go, when I'm trying to design something for the submarine, it's like, I, I'm like, okay, I've got an idea, but how easy is this thing going to be to build? So I would go and I, I was the only engineer that would do this. I'd go talk to the guys in the shop that had been doing this for 20, 30 years, you know, doing the manufacturing, the, the, the creating of the parts, you know, like they're the ones that are actually making these things we do the design, but they do the actual, like, okay, this is how we have to machine this. So I'd go back and I'd be like, like, okay, this is my idea. How easy is it going to be to build? And they'd be like, well, that's going to be kind of, you know, complicated, but we, you know, but we can take this part here that we already have and kind of tweak it and and like, okay, perfect. So I'll go back and integrate that. So I learned that the best way to do things is often to take something that's already in existence. It cuts down cost and it makes the manufacturing process much easier. Instead of reinventing the wheel every time, you just sure. adapt the wheel. So um, so that was where I'm like, you know, I had a number of ideas about doing wraparound things and I'm like, ah, oh, that would be like so complicated and probability for breakage and blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, all I really need is the perfect jar for my formulations. I need a container to contain my recipe, basically, like, you know, a famous pasta chef who, you know, people are like, can you please put your amazing pasta sauce in a jar so I can buy it in England or in Ohio and don't have to fly to your restaurant in San Francisco to eat it. So um, the, you know, the chef is not going to go and invent a jar. He's just going to, well, I'd like this, this is a perfect size jar, the shape, I like the shape, it opens easily, you know. So I am like, okay, I just need the right jar that will accelerate the whole process. So if I get the right jar, then I can put my recipe in it. And so that's what I did. I went and I, I started looking what would be the perfect jar. And I found this one foot by one foot container basically that was being used for residential lighting applications. So I, I and I'm like, this is perfect because it's lightweight, it's portable and it covers a large surface area. I can put my quantum healing formulations in it and the light therapy component. and 
it will be very, you can use it for everywhere in the body and it's modular for people that want to set up, you know, whole bed. Um, so that was what I did. And, um, and I was able to, and then I, I literally contacted, I think two manufacturers and I'm like, can you take this and put this inside it? And then I found one that's like, yep, we can do that. And I'm like, okay, can you get it to me? Can you get me these prototypes and get them to me within five weeks? Because that was when I was going to be speaking at the Bulletproof yeah. Conference. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll launch at the conference. And I've already got the speaking engagement. So this is how fast it all fell into place. I mean, it was like, okay, you know, like. Am I <clears throat> all the ripples that had to happen to make it so, though. I mean, that's that's incredible. Well, yeah, well, and a lot of people going, please do this. Like, <laughs> So anyway, so yes, it, and they, they arrived like the, I'm like, okay, they're still not here. Um, am I going to like, I'm, I'm talking to my next door neighbor. Can you like, if these come after I leave, can you FedEx them to me? And, but they arrived like literally the, like the evening before I was like supposed to get on the plane to fly out to this conference. So I was like, okay, I've got them. Uh. And um, anyway, so I set up the booth. I had two amazing um, friends that helped me to do the launch and we had, we we set up like just chairs where people could experience these for themselves. And we, people could not get through the aisle. Like they, it was so crowded. We were like the one booth in the entire huge tech hall. People were swarming around, like just clamoring to try to experience them because people would experience them and then they're telling everybody and then trying to keep up with the orders. So that, and I did a, I did a pre-launch. I did like my own Kickstarter kind of thing. Like I took orders and then like, okay, you pay for it. And then you're going to get your, you're going to get your rejuvenator in five to six weeks. So, um, so that's, that's how I launched. And yeah, we could, we couldn't keep up. And then ever since then, it's just been word of mouth. You know, they told two friends and so on, like fractals going out into the That is so awesome. Right. What a great story. Yeah. I mean, so how, when, how did that feel to launch that though? I mean, it, you know, how did it feel? Yeah. Well, it felt like it felt like, I mean, after it was, you know, after it was out there, I'm like, you know, I was supposed to do this a long time ago, but <laughs> 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 everything happens at the right time. So yeah. I, I, I never look at it like, oh, you know, like it would have been better if I'd done it before it, everything happens exactly when it's supposed to happen exactly. so um, yeah it was just people were ready also because i'd already validated the science of like therapy then after i launched then i've got now i've got proof of concept for the quantum healing part because light therapy like i said can only do so much i, I use the analogy when people go out under sunshine you know sunshine has all kinds of healing benefits if you're in sunshine in nature you're going to get exponentially more benefits because you're surrounded by those life force energies that are abundant in nature, you know, big bodies of water. And I don't mean Los Angeles. I mean, like, in a, you know, like in the Caribbean on a beautiful Island where it's like, you don't have a huge amount of like, or city nearby or, um, but you know, up in the mountains, that's where you get that direct exposure to a, but an abundance of life force energy. There's different names for it. Chi, prana, ki, um, you know, the, it's, it's all the same thing. Um, and again, it's that energy that keeps us alive, that keeps this physical tissue alive. Um, so, um, the, oh, I went off on a tangent again. Where did no, that bring was good. It was, that was really good. I love it. I know. If I don't circle back, then I feel like, oh, there's like this little dangling thing. Um, so <laughs> going, yeah, the, oh yeah. So yeah, the, the whole quantum energy thing. So because I'd already validated the science of light therapy for, for more than 10 years at that point, then I'm like, now I, I led with the light therapy part, but you know, in the background, there's this quantum healing aspect because you have to introduce brand new concepts with Slow. baby steps. I yeah. found. Yeah. Because yeah. Otherwise people get overwhelmed. Like it's like tilt for them. They can't comprehend. It was the same thing at the beginning, you know, with the light therapy, but that's why my talks early on, they're like an hour and a half just to give you the building blocks so you can understand this concept um, and piece it all together from not just scientific data, 
you know, that had been around for more than a hundred years, by the way, it wasn't like, this is new. I didn't invent light therapy. People had been researching it for, you know, since the late 1800s. So, um, people, you know, like Niels Finson in 1902, I believe it was won the Nobel prize for medicine for his research with using red light for healing, you know, smallpox scars and, um, tuberculosis of the bones. And, um, um, so anyway, all of, this wasn't new information. It's just, it wasn't getting out there. It was being suppressed. It wasn't, you know, like there's no, there's no vested benefit for anybody to promote something that you can go stand under the sun. You know, it's free. Nobody can make money off of that. So, um, um, although they did in Switzerland, you know, and in, in Canada, back in the day, they had these heliotherapy clinics where people with tuberculosis or children that were very sick, yeah, they're, they're treating yeah. us here go go lay under the sun. There you go. Okay. That's your, that's your treatment. Do that every day and you'll get better. And they did. Um, so, but again, these were in the pristine mountains, you know, they're not in a big city. So if you're standing under sunlight in the middle of New York city, you're still going to have a net negative effect because all of the, the toxic, you know, electromagnetic frequencies and the, the toxic energies and the pollution and the, you know, the chaotic energy, because all of that, you know, people in a state of chaos, all of that, you know, getting in an argument with somebody, um, getting in it, like somebody cutting you off in traffic, all of that is like little straws that are, you know, people are sticking in your gas tank, or you are being exposed to these straws that are in your life force energy gas tank, and they're siphoning off that life force energy. That's why you can go from being, oh, I'm in a great mood. And then you get like, somebody starts yelling at you for something. And then you're like, oh, exhausted you know, like you get in an argument and you're you're depleted immediately because it just sapped your energy it like stole a bunch of your energy so th- we used to spend time in nature we used to be connected to nature and the earth and now more and more people live in cities they live in these hermetically sealed environments you know where they have they heat and they air condition their home they never go outside if they go outside it's to get into their air conditioned car or their heated car and drive somewhere else and then they get into another building so more and more people these days are and a lot of that is societal conditioning as well because they just don't understand the importance of spending time in nature so they're like disconnected from these natural life force energy healing energies that we used to have an abundance of in our lives and that used to be like me intuitively as a child growing up in canada i'd be like i was just out in nature all the time i still am i mean at my ranch i'm like i am outdoors all the time i don't i don't air condition my house in the summer until it gets nighttime and i live in texas where sometimes it gets 110 degrees here (laughs) but um, if it does get in the hundreds then i will I'll close up my doors and then I'll turn the, I'll turn the indoor temperature like to um, like something in the high eighties. And then because I'm in and out all the time, but other than that, I just don't air condition. So, because I can go, I acclimate to the heat and that's much healthier for you that way. Same thing in the winter, I'll, I'll, you know, wear sweaters inside the house so I can keep the temperature in the house cooler because then when I go outdoors, it doesn't feel very cold. And I just bundle up and I, I spend, all even we're in the middle of a freeze right now well yesterday was actually beautiful and warm but um we're gonna have temperatures in the teens again tonight so but like the the freezing cold days where it was like below freezing i'm outside i'm like i bundled up i'm out there with my dogs like i was loving it it's like i'm used to this so um um i wait what was the question i mean you you covered it i love it I, i mean I mean, I think for my audience that they, they just, uh, I think they're going to be enamored with you a hundred percent, just like I am. I mean, I could listen to you speak all day because you have, you have such enthusiasm and just, um, you know, you talk about life force. I mean, it just oozes from you. I mean, you're, you're very inspirational and all that you've done to accomplish what you have done. And, and now with the device, you know, the fact that you, you heated the call and you now have it, you know, I, I see your posts. I mean, this is just very briefly, maybe just give my audience a sense of the things that it can address. Right. You know, because I've seen you talk about, you know, you know, people bringing their pets and, and utilizing the, the device for that. I, I, um, yeah, I, I know you mentioned, uh, sort of reversing aging and, and skin conditions and even COVID, you know, for, you know, for the long, yeah, uh, the long sufferers of COVID, right? You know, the long haulers, mm-hmm. I should yeah. say. Yeah, 
All, all of the above. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would say the majority of the people that are in the rejuvenator community have come because they've in many cases spent years, if not decades, struggling with one health problem after another that then snowballs into all of these health issues. And if they got started in the pharmaceutical realm, then that adds a whole other, you know, can of worms to the mix. But, um, so, I mean, anything and everything that you can think of, because every imbalance, whether it's a skin issue or an internal organ problem or anything like that, it all starts in the energy body system. So I, I do pro bono healing consultation call times two afternoons a week where people, when people have a ton of questions and they've got all these health issues and they're imitation only, so people can't just go on my, I never get anything done. If I like, but um, um, so I'll, in within like 15 minutes, I can tell them, all these things that they've been struggling with for decades, like where I can tell them, okay, go, let's go back. When, when did it first start? When did these, you know, like it might be in childhood. Well, what were the first things that you dealt with in childhood? And then going through that and then telling them the progression, well, that started there, that weakened that energy system. The whole thing started from, you know, whatever the situation was, whether it was childhood trauma or being in an, you know, like, you know, it, um, perfectionist or whatever, all these things that we impose on ourselves often from an early age. In my case, it was, you know, growing up in a very traumatic family and like lots of screaming and yelling and constantly not knowing, like, am I going to be, am I going to have a place to live? Am I going to be like out in the snow or, you know, like, and um, that constant fight or flight. Uh, so I used to have constant liver, like my liver didn't function for years. I, I just couldn't detoxify and I accumulated all these toxins. I didn't find out until I was in my twenties, late twenties, um, what was actually going on after I moved to Italy. Um, anyway, longer story. I, I managed my liver dysfunction for like about 18 years where I had to juice fast twice a year. Um, just to like clean house yeah. so that I could continue to function. I, it didn't heal my liver, but it helped me to be able to keep things, you know, like clear, cleared out of my system. The rejuvenator finally permanently, like completely healed my liver, like, uh, and everything works great now. So, um, I have a stronger functioning liver now than I, than when I was, you know, 13 years old. So, um, but all that to say that all these things that, you know, cancer, for example, is an accumulation of toxins and blocked energy in the system and where it manifests in the body that, you know, that tells you what energy system is affected and what psycho-emotional root there is to con that's connect that's at the foundation of that. But basically everything is healable and reversible. We've been conditioned to think that, oh, you just have to deal with that the rest of your life and you're going to take a for it. And, you know, you're going to pay for that pill or your insurance is going to pay for it. But it's like nothing, nothing in the pharmaceutical industry is free. You're paying for it. If you, yeah. I, I talk to people all the time. Well, I used to not so much anymore, but, um, but they, it's like, oh, I have these two job opportunities and I'm going to take this one because it's got way better medical, but I really, that job would be way more fun, but I'm going to take this one because it's got better insurance. And I'm like, you're going to be needing that insurance because you're going to be stressed out. And you're going to be hating time, your life yeah. because you're taking a shitty job because <laughs> you want the medical insurance instead of like the staying healthy and happy because you take this other job over here that's going to keep you satisfied and fulfilled or going and doing your own thing, you know, being a, becoming an entrepreneur and like relying on yourself a hundred percent and never having to, you know, follow anybody else's rules or stay with state yep. color within the lines <laughs> restrictions <laughs> <laughs> and show up at nine o'clock for people that are night owls. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, for, for my audience of uh, scheduling this, one of the things that I, I really, I, I gotta, you know, um, I got to tell them about our conversation about like, no, you got to do it in the afternoon because you're a night owl. So you stay up, you get your most, you know, energy at night. And so you're like, Hey, we got to do it after 12. Cause you know, you're, otherwise it's not that I get most of my energy at night, I get energy from the moment I get up, I, yeah. but because I want to be outside all day while it's daylight yeah, and often yeah. in the evening uh, in the summer months, I come in and I start doing my indoor projects got, yeah. when it's 
start. So that means that I, I've done a ton of stuff. I do a lot of stuff on my phone also. Like I do all my email and a lot of, you know, supporting people in the community because a lot of it is digital. So I'm working on that outside all the time. I sit outside. But when I, when I have stuff that I want to work on inside my house or projects or things like that, that I do need to be indoors for, then I'll start like sometimes nine o'clock at night and I'll just go and go and go and go and go and go. And then, and then I'm like, okay, I should probably eat something. And then I'll, watch at least an hour if not two hours of streaming video that's just kind of my wind down time that where I, yeah. I call it reconsolidating my chi where I bring my energies back in because I can't I well I could just go right to bed but I don't want to do that I want to have that wind down time instead of just being like in full speed you know Tasmanian devil mode and then like go to sleep because that's doesn't work for doesn't me doesn't work I for just, you yeah I love that <laughs> Oh, that, yeah. So, I mean, historically, I used to go to it for, for, for decades, two in the morning was my normal bedtime. I mean, yeah. it's just like, but I, I only need five to six hours sleep. So that's, you know, perfect. And then I get up and then I, I start. You're going. off to the races. More Tasmanian devil. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, I can, I can, but... I could talk to you all day. I mean, I, I love just hearing the backstory and, you know, the reluctant aspect of you being an entrepreneur and just how motivating and inspiring that is. And um, before we finish up, we'll make sure that everybody that um, sees this episode knows how to get in contact with you and how to follow you because you are amazing at every level. But I always like to finish up these interviews and we'll, we'll definitely have to do a follow up. So, I mean, there's just so much more to dig into, but um, for the sake of time, and I know you're, you're busy, I, I want to I want to try and wrap this up with a couple of ripple oriented questions, if you don't mind. Sure. So, best thing about being an entrepreneur. Oh, best thing about being an entrepreneur is I, and I've been an entrepreneur well before I was a full-time professional artist. I, even while I was living in Italy, I was, I had my own um, business. So, um, but the best thing is being able to make your own rules and, not have to follow anybody else's, you know, restrictions or limitations. And also, you know, work whenever I want. Um, I, I only do things that inspire me that I, I love doing. So I never feel like I'm working. Um, but yeah, the freedom, the freedom to create all of that. And then also you can literally manifest anything that you want. So, you know, sometimes people have a mindset, well, there are certain things you can't make money, you know, like when I, Again, this was a calling, you know, when I was, I was told, okay, now you're going to become a full-time professional artist. There's a longer story that goes with that, but I was like, oh, that's not going to be interesting to me. That's not going to be interesting enough. And it, but it's like, you know, my, my download said, no, it's time to be a full-time professional artist. So I'm like, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, then I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm rejecting that whole starving artist, you know, mindset. It's like, I'm going to be a very successful, well-paid artist. So, and I yeah. was, it was like three years of for beca being a beginner painter, literally, I'd never painted before. I went from not being, not painting at all to like being internationally known within the first year. Um, and I'm, and I, and I was making six figures within three years. So, um, and I, because I just, I created that mindset and then anything that oh. didn't align with that mindset, I just didn't allow that into my reality circle and, and so but anyway being able to create your reality because you're 100 percent reliant on yourself would be kind of in a nutshell the best thing i love that so as an entrepreneur what has been one of the biggest lessons that you've learned along the way because you've you've had some you know shifts along the way and done some different yeah. things you know what 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 are some what's one lesson that you take away that you know maybe would help someone that's thinking about being an entrepreneur well, I think, I think it kind of ties in with my previous thing, because w at one point where I was the full-time professional artist, and then all this teaching stuff was taking over, and then I didn't have time to do the, the painting and the, all the exhibitions and all the stuff that I didn't even like doing anyway, um, I, I, but I was passionate about this. And then, so then I would be like, I'm relying on some of my savings and, you know, as I'm doing more of this teaching stuff where I, there's no monetization, I wasn't charging for any, it was all free, but I'm like, this is what I love doing. And this is what I'm passionate about doing. And I'm not making any money doing this. So whenever I would give a talk, I would be like, okay, leap of faith, you know, just give one of these lectures. And then the universe would be like, somebody from New York city would contact me and want to buy one of my paintings. So I'd be like, here's $10,000. 
So, um, but the, but the thing was that basically, again, we create a reality. So if you get focused on like the lack or the, like, I don't have enough or how am I going to pay my bills and worrying about that, you focus your energy on that part, the negative part and the worrying and the fear, you're going to attract more of that. So yeah. you focus on what it is that you want to create and the abundance and the, you know, the, the prosperity and the wealth and the ability to do this, that you're, what you're passionate about and help millions of people, you focus on that and focus on, you know, like I'm going to be taking care of myself. I'm not just going to give, give, give and not have something that's taking care of me because that's one of the things that people in the healing arts often have to learn is that we need to take care of ourselves. I use the analogy of like when you're on the plane that, you know, it's going to crash, the oxygen mask comes down. They're like, put your own oxygen mask on first, yeah. then help your loved ones. Because if you don't take care of yourself first, you're not going to be around to help. You're going to pass out. And then your loved ones are going to be like, ah, mom, you know, like, <laughs> help me. Yeah. So you have to, you have to learn to take care of yourself and you have to, know that I need to be provided for if I'm going to be able to do this and it's okay to be provided for and it's okay to be provided very well for because you're helping a lot of people. So anyway, that's probably one of the, the biggest things that coming to that realization and going through the learning curve of realizing that you can't just keep depleting your own life force energy and giving, 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 you have to have something, you have to learn how to take care of yourself also. I love it. If you could provide any <clears throat> up and coming professional with any advice, uh, you know, about what it would mean to be an entrepreneur or to take control of your health or take control of your life, what advice mm -hmm. would you give? So you mean somebody that's considering becoming an entrepreneur? Maybe, or just somebody that's yeah. hearing this, that's like, you know, maybe I'm um, kind of, kind of like you, you were when uh, you work for, uh, you're, you're working on subs. You're like, I just, this isn't uh -huh. for me. I want to do something different. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. So if you're not excited to get out of bed in the morning and do what it is that you do for at least eight hours a day, you're doing the wrong thing. You're yeah. wasting your life. We are all here. We all have a path and purpose in life. And our entire purpose here is to figure out what that thing is, because when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you you never feel like you're working a moment in your life. It doesn't feel like work. It's like this word that, you know, has this negative connotation, but it doesn't feel like work. It's like, you know, people are like, you work all the time. It's like, I never feel like I'm working. I feel yeah. like I'm on vacation all Same. the time. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I do a lot of work, but I, it doesn't feel like work. So the guideline is if you're not excited about what you're doing, like every moment of the day. And there, like, literally it's gotten to that point. It's like, there's nothing that I do. I don't do stuff that I don't like doing. I just don't, I've gotten, to that. it's like, you know, but like even early on learning PowerPoint, it was like, you know, once you get, it's like, oh, it's kind of fun, you know, like yeah. the, the, the resistance that we have to doing certain things, it's like, sometimes you just have to get going and then you're like, oh, okay. And another thing is I teach about, you know, getting into flow you, but you have to be passionate about what it is that you're learning about learning about. And if you're not learning and growing all the time, that's going to be very unfulfilling and unsatisfying. So don't focus on the paycheck and the money that you're going to be making. Never That should never be the primary focus. The primary focus should always be, does this light me up? Does this make me excited to get out of bed in the morning and start working on it? Because when you're doing the thing that you're excited about doing, the money will always follow. And I know people hear that all the time and they're like, oh, but how am I going to pay my bills? And I'm going to, it's like, trust me, it's like, start it. Well, I've got a family. It's like, well, then start doing it while you're doing the other job, but you know, yeah. take baby steps, awesome. you know, that was yeah. what I did with, you know, I'm full-time artist and then I'm doing this other stuff. This isn't paying me anything. And you know, the stuff that is making me money, is like, I'm, I'm not putting energy into that anymore. So you just ha sometimes have to take that leap of faith and then that everything will work out, but well, staying yeah. focused on what you want to manifest and not worrying about, can I pay my bills? You know, like, yeah. you know, no, that's don't, great let, advice. don't let those thoughts creep in. You literally have to replace the fear of thoughts with, okay, this is what I'm manifesting. This is what I'm creating and mm -hmm. replace that. Cause we can only have one conscious thought in our minds at a time. Thought is energy and we attract the things to us based on the energies that we're putting up, thoughts that we have in our mind. So you're thinking, okay, well, I'm, I, this is what I'm, 
you know, focused on manifesting and thinking about it in the first person present tense is extremely powerful as though it already exists. And then you'll be amazed at how many people start showing up in your life, you know, and it's that ripple thing, but you don't even realize you're rippling that energy out there just through your thinking and focusing those thoughts on what you want to manifest. And then all of a sudden somebody says, Hey, why don't you come to this dinner party? Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like, okay. And then you meet somebody that has this connection that is exactly what you need need. for the way that these things happen. And it's just, you go with it. Yeah. Like you said, uh, it's, it's not by accident. It's not random. These things do are, you know, intentional and you got to pay attention to them for sure. Yes. What, and that's what, the uh, you have to be able to pay attention. Yeah, absolutely. What would be the best thing you could hear a client, a friend or a family member say about you? Huh? The best thing. I don't know. I, I get compliments all the time. People like, you know, in, in my community, they're like, thank you, Leon, for making this device. And thank you. You know, it's like, and I'm always like, you know, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So I don't really, I don't, the same thing when people would gush over my paintings and I'm like, I don't really feel like I created them. I'm like, it was my hand, but I was guided and I, you know, I'm just channeling something. So I'm just doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So I don't, I don't, I mean, compliments are like, oh, that's good. I'm glad it's helpful to you, but I don't get, I don't, I don't even get your, your energy. I don't know. I just, I, 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 I get my satisfaction from what I'm doing and from, from being able to help people and especially helping pets, you know, especially when we bring pets back from the brink of death. That's like, I love that. Um, that's probably, I, I do love that. I love when people are like, Oh, you know, my vet said we have to put my pet down because he's got this or that, or the, this thing. And then I use the rejuvenator and we like, he's all better and like, he's happy. And he's like running around the yard and it's, you know, many years of life after that. So that, that's probably one. I do enjoy that. I have a whole community in telegram where I teach people how to take care of their pets naturally and holistically and very inexpensively and without having to ever, you know, inject them with things and, um, give them drugs or pharmaceuticals and how to keep them super healthy. And, um, uh, yeah. So another thing that I do for free because I love doing it. (laughs) If, uh, if you had to describe yourself in one word, what would it be? (laughs) One word. Oh my God. (laughs) Um, energetic, I guess maybe. (laughs) I, I would have to concur without question, without question. Well, last two questions. Uh, okay. What does the ripple effect mean to you? What does, well, the, you know, I, I think we've talked about this um, and also via email that your, your word, the ripple effect, I, I teach about this. I call it pay it, pay it forward. I'm constantly repeating the benefits of paying it forward. Go out of your way to help others whenever you can. And that then always comes back. You don't do it for that reason, but it always comes back to exponentially benefit you. I started learning that when I was very, very young in life. Like I would just always help people because I loved doing that. And that's rippling that, you know, healing energy or positivity or whatever information out into the world. Whenever I needed something, it would just like, I, it, I never have been wanting because you're, you're creating this abundance and you're creating flow in your life because you're rippling information. You're rippling that positive energy, healing energy, whatever it is out into the world. And it literally is like circling back to you. So it's the, I, I call it pay it forward. Um, and you call it rippling, rippling. Um, it's the same thing or flow, you know, where I teach people about flow. It's literally creating that movement forward of energy and then it, it's like cyclical. It's the same thing with the, you know, our, our energies in our energy body. They, they actually go in a big circle around us. And then, um, so everything creates flow and it comes back to you. It's like a boomerang. Yeah. So I love that's it. Cool. I love it. That's a great definition. I love that. Um, what ripple can I create for you? Um, what ripple can you create? Well, I think just the fact that we're having this conversation, I mean, you never know. I do. I do. I, when people invite me to be on their podcast or I, I get invited a lot. Sometimes it's kind of like it resonates immediately, like in this case. And sometimes it's like, eh, I don't, you know, like I, I, and I don't ever reject something outright. It's just kind of like energetically. It's not like, 
it just doesn't jive and then it just won't happen, you know, like, or so when, when, when I do things and I'm following my intuition, I'm following, you know, like, you know, you're like, Hey, let's do, let's do this podcast. And we actually talked about doing this. I think it was a year ago. And yeah, then I never yeah. got the email and I'm like, okay, well it'll happen when it's supposed to happen. And then you're like, Hey, I know you never replied to my email. And I'm like, I never got your email. <laughs> so like, but, but I now you got busy, but it all worked that, out, right? The fact that we're doing it now, I mean, it's all, it's all perfect timing. I don't, I have no idea what, you know, who's going to hear this or who it's going to benefit, but I'm sure it will benefit somebody and, you know, also each of us, the connection and reconnecting and, you know, (laughs) I'm sure we'll be staying in touch more often. Um, So, however, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't have any expectations I just, you know, do what I'm guided to do. And when I do that without, you know, like worrying about what, well, am I going to be wasting my time doing this or is it going to be, I just, if I get a yes on something, then I do it. If I get a no on something, then it kind of fizzles up. So this was an emphatic yes. And now we're, Uh, I don't know. I'm tremendously honored that you came on the show for sure. And before I let you go, tell everyone how you would most like them to learn about your work and to follow you. Oh, um, okay. Well, I have a couple of websites. They both, they're, they're sister websites. Catalyticcolor.com is where all the information about um, healing colors and light. My leannevenier.com, L-E-A-N-N-E-V as in Victor, E-N-I-E-R.com. That was the website that the URL that I had when I was a full-time professional artist. Yeah. Well, and, um, but it points over to catalyticcolor.com. So they're interconnected. Um, so catalyticcolor.com is C-A-T-A-L-Y-T-I-C-C-O-L-O-R.com, like catalytic converter, but it's catalytic color and it's the American spelling. Um, but also looking for me, just putting my name in on Google, although, yeah, it's like I've got a YouTube channel. You can go on YouTube, although I'm now reactivating the channel and starting to up, get somebody to upload stuff for me because... But anyway, there's a lot of video content, but catalyticcolor.com is probably the best place because there are vet- videos embedded there. There's information about the Red Juvenator. I'm also on Instagram. There, There's like hundreds and hundreds of testimonials on, you know, like real world testimonials yeah. from our community members all shared with permission from you know, people emphatically say, yes, please share my testimonial. So I have people post those on my Instagram wall because that's one of those things that I don't like doing um so (laughs) (laughs) and uh, anyway so yeah they're uh, social media I'm kind of shadow banned on Facebook I you probably don't see many of my posts on that (laughs) I I educate people about things that are not you know like acceptable per the per some powers that be so So um, don't look on Facebook but find you everywhere else yeah yeah telegram I'm I'm active in telegram so if you're on telegram look for my first and last name i have a few groups in there um but my community my community on um facebook is for my customers because it's 100 percent about rejuvenator therapy so it's not about red light therapy generic red light there it's yeah. a, literally about rejuvenator therapy how to use rejuvenator for permanently healing anything and everything you could possibly think of and bring yourself back into balance healing from long COVID even like you said, or, you know, whatever, whatever it is, I probably shouldn't have said that word because that gets you. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. Yeah. So the catalytic color.com and then Instagram, telegram are probably some good. And we'll put these links up just in the show notes. So everybody knows how to get there and can click and go learn more about you. Um, Leanne, I have just thoroughly enjoyed this time with you. So I am uh, so appreciative of the fact that uh, you agreed to come on board. And we definitely will have to, we are going to stay in better contact. We're, we're not going to say we will, we are going to, we have to, yes. yeah. Um, yeah. because you're doing some important work out there and I want to do what I can to promote you and, and uh, support you anyway. And I, I want to help so. you promote your your amazing work as well because i know I you're getting it. a lot more and more and more and more and you've been you've been doing this for a while now and you're finally getting the the recognition and acknowledgement and wider audience but again it's it's really because people are finally ready for it so you yeah. were just you're, you're, you're talking, so. i was just early yeah, yeah. <laughs> well i appreciate that very much it, that coming from you that's a high compliment for sure well, guys we'll be back with another episode of the ripple effect podcast very soon but until then leanne ripple on Thanks, Steve. You too.
effort. Thanks.